Welcome back to another episode of No Bolts Left Behind. Today, we're picking up where we left off on the Ford Explorer 5.0 swap of my 1968 Mustang. And if you've been watching up until now, you'll know that I bought a running, driving 1996 Ford Explorer two-wheel drive 5.0 to use as a donor car to make sure I had everything that goes along with the engine for the engine swap. And today, I'm gonna start work on the Explorer's wiring harness. I'm gonna get it cut up, stripped down, and ready to work in the 68 Mustang. Wish me luck. <laughs> Let's do it. So here's the first section I'm gonna get started on. This is the engine wiring harness, which is the, the harness that plugs into the coils, injectors, sensors, that kind of stuff. And the idea is to make this guy run standalone, which is, you know, just the ECU and a power ground ignition, you know, just a few connections, and that should get the engine started. So the first step here is just to start removing the electrical tape and all of this old loom. I'm gonna redo all of that stuff. Um, we'll kind of strip this down to just the wires and then we'll we'll start cutting. All right, so I'm realizing now while editing this episode that I kind of just jumped right in there. So let me explain things a little bit more. The idea here is to cut out all of the wires and connectors that aren't essential to making the engine run. My goal here is to run the engine and transmission with the Ford Explorer computer and basically trick it into thinking it's still in the Explorer when it's actually been transplanted into a 50 something year old Mustang. Right now I'm removing the rear O2 sensors. They're used for emissions only and don't affect how the engine runs. All right, so I got this side of the wiring harness stripped down. I think it seems like the, uh, the sections that I'm really gonna need to modify are the the back end kind of near the transmission for the rear O2 sensors because I'm not going to run um, I'm not going to run catalytic converters so I won't be running O2 sensors after the catalytic converters and I think it's these two blue ones this guy and this guy and um, the green ones I believe are the front O2 sensors and unfortunately I accidentally cut the wrong side of uh, one of these guys so um, I'm gonna have to solder back I got just a little bit of wire to do it I got one shot at it and I'm gonna re-solder these connections, restore my uh, one of my front O2 sensors, and I believe I can eliminate these guys. And I'm gonna actually unpin them just to just to get as much wiring out of here as possible. Um, you know, weight savings, everything, every last little bit counts. <laughs> and uh, and then we'll be good. I think I can probably rewrap these guys after I get this repaired, and we can move on to other sections. You know, I I don't think there's gonna be much to undo. This harness from factory is actually pretty close to a standalone harness, it seems like. Um, I'm not totally sure about that yet, but um, I think this is like, you know, transmission stuff. Um, you got the ECU connection there, and then everything else is meant to go right back on the engine. So let's uh, let's keep going at this. We'll get this guy repaired, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So that giant gray connector I'm monkeying with separates the rear section of the engine harness from the front section. Pretty much just transmission wires on the rear section. All right, so I got the rear O2 sensors cut. One thing I noticed though, was that there's some pretty bad wire breakage here. Um, it seems like maybe about a third of these wires have uh, some breaks in them, which is really not good. This one's probably the worst one of all. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, right there. Yeah, that's like that's like a good half inch of exposed wire there. So um, this is definitely the place where electrical gremlins are are born. Um, so it's going to be very important to repair all these guys. Um, I'm going to just seal off any of these wires and get them fixed now so that they don't short out and leave me stranded on the side of the road in about six months. Um, all right. Thank you. 
You know, I kind of just did a little bit of a bold move here and I just put a ton of this silicone in the wiring harness. I just kind of thought that maybe these wires would continue to break over time, especially it seemed like they're breaking right at the connector, probably where they're getting bent. So now that they're all, <laughs> now that they're all repaired, went ahead and just gooped everything. Hopefully that'll keep them like, you know, stable and it'll keep them from like touching and breaking and all that. I definitely am never gonna be able to unpin this again. So that's pretty much a permanent harness right there, but that's just so much better than having like some sort of weird wiring short that I can never solve. So. Hopefully that makes it a little bit more robust. I think I might actually put just a little bit more in there. Yeah, good stuff. Here we go. That's some, uh, that's some serious uh, backyard mechanic stuff right there. You know what? I bet I never have a wire short anywhere in this little pack of wires anymore. All right, so it's the next day and uh, this thing is definitely dried out and successfully preserved all of my wires, but you know, I got to thinking last night. In fact, it, it kind of kept me awake a little bit. <laughs> Definitely was bothering me. I got to thinking this was a little bit crazy. Um, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know, even for my standards, it's a little bit too hacky. And I kept like, it kept bothering me. The, the image of this huge connector with all of this silicone sitting inside this Mustang's engine bay. And you know, there is a serious problem here with wires breaking and I'm sure it's not gonna get any better having these exposed wires with no loom shielding it or anything like that. So I started thinking like what the actual purpose was of this connector. I mean, there's literally only about, well, there's there's four connectors because I'm gonna move this 102 sensor out of the way. So we have this giant connector for four wire connectors and I'm just gonna completely eliminate this big bulkhead thing. You know, this was probably super cool for Ford uh, technicians when they were slamming, you know, 10 transmissions in and out of a car every day. But for me, I, I think I can manage to just disconnect four wires, take an extra 30 seconds or so, and uh, we can do away with this whole thing. And the best part is that we can completely shield all of the wiring from heat. So um, this won't get any worse. It'll pretty much just be bulletproof from now on. So I, I'm going to clip all of these wires off. It's gonna be a little bit tedious. I'm <laughs> not really looking forward to it, but we're going to do that and we're going to have just one single harness. There's not going to not going to have a detachable transmission harness anymore because it's <laughs> totally pointless. So let's get going with that. And I have a few other ideas for some of these other giant connectors. I know that most of the time I think people keep this big, what they call the firewall connector. I don't think I'm going to keep that one either. I think I'm going to cut off um, everything I don't need and cut off the things I do need and then just extend them, solder all the wires and then pass it through the firewall hole just like a, just like a normal car would. That's how every car I've ever had is, has done it. And it definitely makes the wiring harness harder to remove, but you know, I've never really re had to remove a wiring harness before. So, and it certainly won't be not removable anymore. Like it will be removable if I really needed to. So I like this plan. This is gonna do away with these very convenient, but very bad for wiring connectors. It's gonna be a little bit more bulletproof and uh, it's gonna look nicer in this 68. All right, for the record, I highly recommend eliminating these huge connectors. I really don't think they're useful with the swapped engine and as you saw, are a pretty serious failure point in these Explorer wiring harnesses. All I'm doing here is matching the wires from one side of the connector to the other, clipping, soldering, and heat shrinking them back together. All right, I'm uh, making pretty good progress on this, actually. I only have a handful more wires to go. And I do have a couple of these plugs already completely broken out and kind of soldered off. Um, you know, one thing that definitely did occur to me um, is that I'm gonna be shortening this harness by probably about two or three inches. I'm ho really hoping that that's gonna be okay. I, uh, I hope there's enough slack in here and hopefully I can do some adjustments. But I'm also gonna break these out a little bit further back in the harness. So instead of having to all meet up right here and then branch out, they're gonna be able to branch out from up here. So hopefully I'll be able to find paths for all of these. And, and so that'll save me some room there too. Uh, man, I, I really wish I didn't uh, silicone this thing cause it's 
making it very difficult to find all these wires, but I'm cutting through it. I'm digging out these wires and you know, all the colors are the same here. So I'm being very careful <laughs> to match the wire to the wire. And we have a whole bunch of O2 sensor wires that we can actually probably cut out somewhere, you know, however far I want to dig out this uh, harness here. We'll get rid of those and we'll have hopefully like a much thinner, you know, much more streamlined connection between the two. All right, I'll keep going on this. So I got this wire connector completely taken off. Good riddance. I'm, uh, I'm actually really, really happy that I, I went this route. It looks a little bit scary, but actually, you know, I got all of the wires separated here in pretty tidy. And I, I went ahead and cut this back to where this clip was. I realized that I'm gonna have to take all of this back to move back my O2 sensor. This is my front O2 sensor and uh, these are the leftover wires in this other clip. So I guess I can just clip these guys off once I get this guy taken back to all the way around, I'm not sure where, maybe like around here or here, I think. I'm as far back as you can go before you hit a splice. So yeah, we're looking pretty good. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, bundle these guys up all nice and safe and uh, get them loomed and all that stuff. So we're good to go there. And then I'll start stripping down this guy and moving back this O2 sensor. All right, so I got this wiring har harness peeled back quite a bit, actually. So it looks like two of the eight wires terminate right here. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and clip these guys and tape them off so it doesn't, uh, so there are no shorts. Same thing with these two orange ones. And then this is probably about as far up in the wiring harness as I'm gonna go. Um, you know, I could go all the way up and through here and then up into the ECU, but um, I think I'd rather just go ahead and clip these and tuck them into the harness and uh, save myself the time of having to unwrap about two miles of electrical tape right there. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I'm keeping these separate. These are my other front O2 sensor that I'm keeping. But really the whole point of unwrapping all this was to move this guy up and uh, right up over here. I guess this is probably right here, gonna be about as high up as I can get. Uh, you know, I could probably, since I'm not using these, I can probably move that guy up there. So I'll be able to park it right up here, which is good. I think that should put it in a better spot for my long tube headers. And then I can wrap up and finalize this, I think this entire harness, I think that's the only modification I need to do. Uh, and then the next step will be dealing with the other half of this. I'm gonna have to grab the uh, other side of this wiring harness and do some wire splicing with this one. All right, so the blue with the orange stripe, and in a few seconds, the orange wires I'm cutting here are for the rear O2 sensors, so they won't be needed. What I meant by moving up the front O2 wires was moving it where it branches off further up the wiring harness to make sure it reaches the new location of my O2 sensor, which is at the end of my long tube headers. All right, check that out. This is looking so much better. I'm so, so happy that I went this route and just cleaned up this whole automatic uh, transmission wiring harness here. So pretty much from here back is all automatic stuff and it was right here somewhere in the center where that big block was. So now it's all cleanly wired. Um, it's gonna be shielded now. So there's gonna be no you know, exposed wires like on this, this guy here. I mean, all of those wires are, are subject to heat. And one thing too I noticed about this old old block here. Not only was all of the uh, rubber outside part cracking, but some of the wires, um, the actual like copper wires on the inside were brittle too. So this was really just like an electrical <laughs> catastrophe waiting to happen. 
and I've decided I'm definitely going to remove this big wire connector too. It's um, it's huge, it's ugly, it, I'm sure it makes servicing very nice, but I would say if you're pulling out your transmission less than once per week, then you should probably just go ahead and eliminate that huge block and just make it one piece just like this. Highly, highly recommended. All right, well now the fun part. Um, <laughs> definitely the hard part, which is figuring out all of these wires, figuring out where they go to and getting rid of the ones I don't need and sending whatever I do need into the firewall. Pretty much like half of these are gonna go through the firewall underneath the dash, you know, things like reverse light and um, gauge wiring. And then the other half are gonna go to my fuse block over here. I am gonna reuse this old fuse block, or I should say almost new fuse block. The thing I set up for my, originally for my Holly Terminator X. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this. This should work out pretty good to set up my new harness. So let's, uh, let's get started on this. First step will be to probably cut all of this stuff here between the ECU and the connector because I am gonna fully remove some of these wires and then I will start to strip down this big boy here.